Workers in the so-called gig economy are ramping up their fight for better pay and conditions. This time, riders for food delivery company Hungry Panda are protesting against changes to their wages. The union claims the company is putting profits before the safety of their drivers. Fed up with having to put up with changes to their pay. Drivers for food delivery service Hungry Panda made their anger heard at the Sydney offices of the multinational company. We will lose 10 to 15 per cent of our base salary. Last week, the delivery drivers were notified their rate of pay would be changing. James Yang says it would mean losing a considerable amount of income which he relies on to support his wife and four children back home in China. The reduced rate will force us to earn $500 less per week, so it's really not enough. In response, he organised a small strike last week, but hours later his account was suspended, meaning he could no longer work for the company. They put their hands up and said this is not good enough and they were sacked. This is the law of the jungle and it's not what we expect in the Australian community. Hungry Panda is guilty of the most reprehensible behaviour. To unilaterally cut the pay and income of these hard-working riders is a slap across the face. But the UK-based company is defending its decision. Our pay structure, even after the adjustment, is still competitive in the market and above uh, the uh, other competitors that operate in this industry. Last year, four food delivery riders died on Australian roads within two months, including Hungry Panda rider Xiaojun Chen. When did we decide that in a first world country there'd be some people with third world working conditions? That's exactly where we've landed. The New South Wales government today released a draft report pointing to poorly designed apps and unrealistic delivery times. Safety has become a distant second and that has bothered me greatly, so we're making changes to that. A final report is due to be handed down in April. Lydia Feng, ABC News, Sydney.